Hey there, is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So welcome to church. Let's all stand up together and worship God as we sing 10,000 Reasons.
wish I had my worship team with me, um, but it's just me in this weird makeshift studio uh, that we've put in our house all of a sudden. Um, I pray that everybody's keeping safe um, during this pandemic, um, praying for all of you, and I hope that um, that we're all together very, very soon. Good morning. Hope you're doing great. Hope you've enjoyed this time of worship we've had together. I want to thank you so much if you're tuning in for joining us in our worship experience this Sunday morning. My name is Frank Davis. I'm the lead evangelist and senior pastor of Haven Rock Church, and we are very, very honored to have you as our guest this morning. Now, let's continue to worship. I'm going to lead us the word of prayer, and then we're going to get right into the lesson. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much for allowing us to bask in your glory this morning. Help us to stop. I know we're home, we're watching on devices. Help us to stop and take the time to really celebrate you. Help us to God to let your word speak to us, to open wide our hearts to receive your word and that every word is led by your Holy Spirit. Father God, we pray this in your name and through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, amen, amen, and amen. Let's hop right on into it. This is Haven Rock, as we said, and the, the title of the message this week is the main thing. In fact, that's going to be the title for the next several weeks. We're doing a series on the main thing starting this morning. Now, now what is that all about? I think we're all in search as, as people of what is the, the purpose, what is the main thing, the driving force of our lives. And many of us, even those of us in the Lord, feel empty and lost at, at times because we don't really know what we're doing. And we don't know whether we're doing the right thing. We feel like we're alive, is spinning in circles. Or, you know, is, is our life really going to have meaning? Or, I, I've lived a lot of my life. You know, it hasn't had meaning. Have I wasted my time with the choices that I've made? What is the main thing? There's a quote I want to read by Stephen Covey. It just says, the main thing is to keep the main thing, the main thing. Now, I'm going to read another quote next week that's very similar to this, but Stephen Covey, I think it is, says the main thing is to keep the main thing, the main thing. Okay, so what does that mean? I, it's a complicated way of saying that we got to figure out what the main thing is and hold on, and, or hold on to it. Because even after you discover it, it's very easy to kind of lose focus again and, and get, get back in the spin cycle of doing everything, but not the main thing. You got to know who you are and what you were created, put on this earth to do. You know, I don't know about you. You know, uh, sometimes uh, you can watch a movie. And sometimes with me, I get drawn to a movie, just when someone watching at home, whatever, and it, it seems interesting. And, and a lot of good pieces to it. I get drawn into it, and I, I keep watching for the the big moment and what the point is, but the, the interesting pieces. And when I get to the end, there is no point. And I'm so disappointed because I felt like I spent two hours and there was no payoff. There's no point to the movie. Other times you get drawn a little bit, it doesn't seem as good, but, but the payoff is so big at the end. The, it, there was a point to everything all the way down the line. And even the things that seem inconsequential, right, they have meaning. Well, I want my life to be that version of a movie. That even the things that seem inconsequential or make no sense, there's a big purpose. There's a big payoff at the end. But the only way that happens in life is to discover what the main thing is and hold to it and not get sidetracked with storylines that don't pay off, right? So the main thing is the main thing. What does that mean? I want to read a passage. It's a lengthy passage, but we're going to read it and then dissect it a little bit together. And uh, this series is coming out of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. But I say that, but the, but the thought begins in chapter 4. You know, the Bible wasn't written with, with chapters and verses. And these were written as, as letters. The, the 1 Corinthians is a letter. 2 Corinthians is a letter. And these were complete thoughts, complete books, right? And so the chapters and verses sometimes cut off thoughts. And so the, 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 the thought in 2 Corinthians 5 really starts in chapter 4. So we're starting in chapter 4, verse 16. 
And it simply says, therefore we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Chapter 5. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling. Because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. For while we are in this tent, we, we are grown and a burden because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Now the one who has fastened us for this very purpose is God, who has given us a spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. That's a mouthful. And we're searching for the main thing, right? Well, the scriptures give us the main thing right in this passage. Did you catch it? It basically tells us that heaven is our purpose. Heaven is our purpose. And you find it right here in chapter 5, 5. It says, now the one who has fastened us for this very purpose is God, who has given us the spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Heaven is is our purpose. Heaven is the reason we were put here. I wasn't put here to get a big house, to have a great job, to, to make the most money, have the most toys, you know, to have a family, have a sit. Look, those things are great. And the storylines. But they've got to serve a greater purpose. Man, we're, we're in the heaven business. You know, church, churches aren't built for programs. Programs are great. They're not built to have great music ministries. They're built to be not great. They're not here to be the biggest church on the block. We're in the heaven business. And the goal is to get to heaven. And you know what? To bring as many people with us along the way. You know, God created a Brill Agnew and Sean Colosimo and Brian Burrow and Walter Goslin and, and Daniel Curry and Latricia and everybody. He created you not for your job, not even for your family. He put you here on earth hoping that you would find him, hold on to him, and achieve real life one day. In fact, our life on this earth is not even the movie. It's the trailer. It's the appetizer. It's not the main course. It's the appetizer. Life begins in heaven. He said, look, this is all about you choosing to be with me. I, I didn't make you robots. Right? I didn't make it so you had no choice. This is about you being created. And I hope one day you will find my love and respond to my love, and choose to be with me forever. And that's when the movie starts. That's when, that's, that's the whole point of all this. The whole point of this isn't to accumulate the most degrees, or to get the most friends, or to have the, the most, the, 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 be social media famous. It's not to have the most toys. Sometimes we look back at our life with regret because we, you know, we make different choices, we have this or we have that, and God says, look, whatever. The question I have for you is, have you made the main thing the main thing? Because the main thing has got to be the main thing. H have you been making this about me? Because every decision that we make gets us closer to heaven or further from heaven. Every choice that we make gets us closer to heaven or further from heaven. And everything we're about is that this is this goal. The, the goal is heaven. We're in the heaven business. As a church, as we try to navigate our, our new reality in 2020, as we try to figure out what to invest in and, and whatever, it, it's got to be about what helps people get to heaven. You know, what can make us more effective of helping each other get there and helping other people get there because at the end of the day, the church is, is in the heaven business. And every disciple is running the race to get to heaven. And that's your purpose. That's got to be the driving force. That's got to be what we're all about. That's the main thing that's got to remain the main thing. And even when you know it, it's easy to lose it. 
And even if you believe it, it's easy to get drawn in because the world teaches that everything. No, what's the main thing is how much money you have or how much success you've had deemed by other people or this or that or the other thing. You don't, you don't know. I mean, a lot of times, there was an old song, some of the whinings, said you may never know. And the point of the song was you may never know the people you've touched. You may never know all the lives and souls that you've reached. But you'll know one day when you receive a blessed reward. When you get to heaven and you see people there that you had no idea that you touched them. But they're there. You had no idea that your faith in going through what you've gone through touched someone's life and inspired them to make it. See, the things that are going to have meaning at the end of the movie are really the end of the trailer are not always the things that we invest in, stress over, worry about in this life. The main thing has got to be the main thing. And heaven is the purpose. Heaven is the goal. Heaven is what we're achieving. And it doesn't mean you don't want a great life here or life to the full here because God, God will bless you with that. But it's not about here. It's about there. It's about using our talent and our blessings to, to grow spiritually, but also to help others grow spiritually. Because in the, at the end of the day, this is a blip. That's eternity. This is the trailer. That's the movie. This is the appetizer. That's the meal. And we've got to be in the heaven business. And you've got to believe that. And the brawl alive from last week, be certain about that. Even though the world says you're crazy to invest in that, right? And you've got to let, believe in that and hold on to that. And hold on to that. That is the driving force of your life. Because if your choices make you richer toward heaven, it's the right choice. If the choices touch people's lives for heaven, it's the proper choice. You know, sometimes we, we get crazy about this because we say, well, all right, so that means I have to invest in my spiritual life and not my, you know, my, you know, not the, my, my other life. It's like, well, if you're a disciple, you don't have two lives. See, I, I don't think there's church and spiritual things and there's your job or the school. I think if you're a disciple, it's all, it's everything you do, you've given to God. And so when I became a disciple in college, I, I didn't stop going to college, but my reason for being on campus was different. My reason for getting good grades wasn't just to, to get into grad school. It was to give God glory. For the reason for being on campus was to touch lives and to be an example. Like, your purpose changes. You know, your reason for wanting to get a bigger house is, is, is to be able to entertain and to, and to make an impact in the community. Like, there's a reason. The reason for wanting more money is to be, to be generous and to touch more lives. Man, the reason for blank is so I can give glory to God, get to heaven myself, but take as many people with me. It's the funny thing about your purpose being heaven and my purpose being heaven is that once you're saved, you've done, you're done. I mean, think about it. Once I was saved, I can't get more saved, right? But God left me here. I can't be more forgiven, but God left me here. So, like, my, my life's purpose before I knew God was to, was to fall in love with him and find him. But his reason for leaving me here in this crazy world was to try to rescue as many souls as possible and bring them with me. So the purpose is heaven. But the reason why he left you here, Frank, Patrice, Lee, Nanozi, go on. The reason why we're here and not in heaven, is because he wants us to touch lives here. And to hold on to our faith while we do it, and to bring as many people as possible along the way. Heaven's the purpose. Heaven's the goal. Heaven is the main thing that has to be the main thing. And Mr. Corona and job pressures and life pressures, it's easy to lose it. 
in, in the midst of commercials telling us that we can, we can be successful and whatever, we get this, it's easy to lose it. In, in, in the midst of a, of a society, it's all about money and prestige. It's easy to lose it. But heaven is the purpose. And we've got to let the main thing be the main thing. Does that make sense? Let's keep on. Other thing about the main thing is that heaven is our hope. It's our hope. And going back to verse 18 of chapter 4, it says, So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. It says what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. And the context of that is that they're having struggles and these massive trials that Paul calls light and momentary trials, right? But the light and momentary as compared to the riches of heaven. He says, look, heaven is our hope. It's our purpose and our hope. Now, what's, what's the significance of that? Because people are driven by three primary motivations. And really, 2 Corinthians 5 kind of lays out the three motivations of following Christ. And the first one touched on in, at the end of chapter 4 and the beginning of chapter 5 is hope. You know, because hope, you know, because the, the three motivations are hope, fear, and love. And those three things inspire us to do amazing things. Hope, fear, and love. And in chapter, chapter 5, it talks about all three motivations as reasons why to follow God, right? And the hope of heaven is one of the motivations. You know, I remember growing up, you know, look, I, I love my mom. My mom was a great mom. I always, always take tough mama jokes at, 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 in uh, sermons and talk about Spanx and whatever, but it was much more than that. She was a great example. And, and really, my, my first hero was my mom. Okay, but she had these four kids and she would try to get us to do the right thing with different things. And sometimes it was the fear of the spanking. The old school mom, you got spanking. No timeout, right? No whatever, you get knocked out. It's old school. And so when I was little, real little, the, the fear of punishment was a motivation. The fear, that's, that's why when she said stay in the yard, you stay in the yard. That's why when she said get home before the lights go out, you got home. Okay. It was the fear of punishment. Fear is a motivation. Hope of reward. You know, I remember that I had a, was I think in third grade, and, and my mom wanted me to get better grades and, and do better job with my chores, right? So I, I was into animals and, and different things, and so she would, would get me a book. I think a sticker book or a, a book about animals every time I, got, I, I, I did my chores and followed up for a certain number of weeks. And, and I really got into it. And I would do my chores and, and make sure everything got done. And, and the hope of a reward inspired me to really get it done. And the most powerful motivation was love. You know, when I got a little older and now I'm, I'm in junior high school, high school, whatever, you know, at the end of the day, fear and punishment would gonna cut it because my mom would, couldn't know how things I did anyway. And, and you get to a point where that's not really gonna be a motivating factor for your life, right? And the hope of reward from her wasn't really the primary thing. But man, my love for my mom and my, my desire not to put shame on our name, it drove me to make decisions that, 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 were, that pleased my mom even when she was not anywhere around me. When there was no way she could hold me accountable for it, the love motivated me, inspired me. And those three things, right, helped shape me as a son. Well, those are the three things that shape you as a disciple. And all three motivations, get this, are valid. We are inspired by our fear of God. We'll talk about that in more in a couple of weeks. But that, that is part of what motivates us. And we are inspired by hope. And we're inspired, the main driving force has to be love. But all three things work together. And this section talks about the hope of heaven. Look, people have said, being a Christian is so great. That even if heaven is not real, it would still be worth living the life. I say to those people, you crazy. If there's no heaven, I'm going to the club tonight. <laughs> you know, come on now. I mean, what? No, I mean, at the end of the day, I, I want the reward. Call me what you want to call me. The, the reward of heaven. It's my hope. It's what helps me to endure when things are tough, it might go through tough times right now. It's the hope of heaven. Not just that I'll get to heaven one day, but it helps me to 
understand and believe there's purpose to my pain. There's purpose to my trials. It's refining me so I can make it to heaven. It's, it's, it's refining me so my faith can grow. It's, it's, it's allowing me to give glory to God through my pain that can inspire someone else or help somebody else or meet a need or help someone else get to heaven. There's purpose to it because we have the hope of heaven for us and for people that we touch. There's purpose to my pain because of the hope of heaven. But I gotta keep that hope fully in view. And I've gotta make sure that I'm certain in my faith that there's a reward worth fighting for. And there's meaning to my life bigger than what the world says has meaning. You know, I've, I've used this example before, but you know, my mom passed away in 2016. In fact, it's, we're a few days past the anniversary of, of her going, going to glory. And um, my mom, she was well accomplished. I mean, she had several master's degrees and, and was great in the field and uh, created things, invented things, ran a company, did an did a ama amazing number of things professionally. And there, there's some people that got up and shared at her memorial services what she did. She had one in Maryland and one in Atlanta, and so they got up and shared those things. But what was very touching is people with tears in their eyes, one after another, talking about how she touched their lives. How she inspired them. How she helped them find faith or hold on to faith or just how, just how they owed their lives to her. Pouring her life out to people in secret. Loving them, being a mom to so many people in secret. And with tears in her eyes, they gave testimony to how she laid down her life. Now, let me ask you a question. What do you want said when you go? Because we're all going. Do you want to talk about your career or what you own or what kind of car you drove. Man, I want, I, I, I want the testimony and tears to be the lives I've touched. But more than that, I want to see those people again in heaven and us to celebrate together. But more than that, I want to see my Savior face to face. Have them wipe the tears from my eyes and say, well done. Well done, my good and faithful servant. That's my hope. That's what gets me through the hard days. That's what helps me to believe and know there's a purpose to my life. And my life, my, my life may seem like scattered puzzle pieces, but they come together for a beautiful purpose. What's your hope today? What are you letting drive you today? Because if, you, if you're hoping to be a big shot in this life, you're in the wrong movie. In fact, you're trying to make the trailer, the movie. What's your hope today? Because I'm telling you, unless your hope is heaven, your hope is not big enough to inspire you to have joy and a great life. The trials that you have will be bigger than your hope unless your hope is heaven. You say, well, I wanted a practical service this morning. You don't get more practical than the main thing. The challenge I want to give myself and all of you is to believe in the main thing and let's hold on to the main thing as the main thing. Let's hold on to that. Let's believe in that. And let's be inspired by that hope. Amen? Amen. That concludes the message for today. In a minute, I'm going to pray for the community. A couple of announcements I have. No, number one is next week, we're going to uh, make the main thing part two. So that should be exciting. So the main thing part two next week. And also, uh, we have our small groups again for midweek. Uh, this week coming, and there are also, also some small groups today after church. So uh, if you're not in a small group and want to be, please contact us through email, a phone call, or texting, and we will get, get you hooked up in a small group. 
we'd love to have you, okay? So we have that going on. I think that covers the major announcements right now. Uh, let's pray for the Lord's Supper, and we'll go on. I just want to pray for the sick, as I know. I don't have a big list of sick, but I want to pray for some. I want to pray for Ori Mack, Heavenly Father, the God, for Walter Martin, the God. I want to pray for Ms. Corrine's health, as always, for my daughter Jacqueline's health, uh, for my own health, the God, uh, the God that you move powerfully in that, the God, for all of us who... Uh, first responders are back at work. We're out there in the street. The God, you can protect us from, from uh, COVID and watch over all, all, the whole family of God and believers. The God, we, we pray for for that in a powerful way. The God, pray for my daughter Kenya, of course, is off of Penn State. Uh, the God, but, but yeah, we, and we, we also pray for all those things. But while we are in kneeling in our hearts in prayer, we pray for communion because we know all things are possible because you sent your son to die for us. God, thank you for the blood that was shed for the body that was nailed to the cross. As we take this bread that represents the body that was broken and drink this fruit of the vine that represents the blood that was shed, that God, I pray that we remember you. Remember that our hope is not in this world. We've been rescued from this world. This world's a burning building. Why don't we put our hope in a burning building? I pray that we understand that this is a trailer for a great movie. And our hope is in you, to God. Help us as we take this communion to remember the main thing. We pray this in your name and through your Son, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.